The start of this conversion was a commission from one of my followers for a version of Gaz who embodied all of the orc clans in his design. This was an interesting challenge, but I still started it with what I do to all my builds, which was to snip Gaz off at the waist so I could expand his midsection. In general, I tend to do this because miniatures often don't have real midsections, and they look more proportional when one is added. And orcs in particular tend to not even really have chests. You can see this in how the groin guard in Gaz's armor is directly attached to the portal for his head. I glued a chunk of PVC sheet to give some height, layered on green stuff to bulk it out, and glued his torso on. To armor the green stuff, I added the pauldron from a killican to his front and the eye slit from a deftra to his lower back. To represent the evil sons, the commissioner had requested this orc tech freak head. It's a great sculpt, but its jaw was a little too wide to fit into Gaz's jaw plate. To make room, I snipped off some of the head's saw chin and scraped clean the inside of the jaw plate. Speaking of making room, I cut off the few armor plates Gaz originally comes with. The reason is that to give Gaz a really imposing and powerful silhouette, he's going to need a bigger chest plate than that one. For breastplates, you either need to go high to give a deep chested look, or a gut plate which gives the figure a slouching and kind of weak silhouette, and that wasn't really the energy I was going for with this conversion. Unfortunately, my first shot at a breastplate was too wide and just looked awkward, a slab of metal instead of a breastplate. To get a better fit, I used this armor plate from a Redemptor Dreadnought. It worked well, but was a little too plain and unorky, so I added this jaw plate from a Killican. This gave him a double tooth aspect that I really liked and felt more orky and imposing. To fill the rest of the gaps left by increasing his height, I used a combination of green stuff and armor plates. The commissioner had specifically requested that Gaz's claw be replaced with the chainsword from an imperial knight to represent the looting nature of the death skulls, so I broke open his arm and cut off the forearm portion. Finding another forearm to replace it was difficult though, as Gaz's proportions are sort of weird. Judging it by the size of his upper arms, this bulgore forearm should match perfectly, but looks hilariously undersized in practice. By contrast, this fire giant jailer forearm is way too large. I eventually settled on a combination of beastman gorgon fist and round armor plate that didn't look too incongruous. To make sure the chain sword would stay in place once glued, I used wire to pin the chain sword and fist together along with a pommel. The limb assembled, I attached it to Gaz. To represent the Snakebite clan, I glued onto Gaz's shoulder the dragon skull from the Age of Sigmar Megaboss kit. I'd later use chains to strap it to the arm and add some pausability for how it stays in place. Another aspect the commissioner asked for was to replace Gaz's toe talons with saw blades. The buzz saws from the Necromunda Ambot kit fit pretty perfect, so I glued those in place. They looked pretty metal. To emphasize the looted nature of the chainsword, I cleaned up the edges and protrusions so I could layer on orc tech. The easiest way to do this was to use the buzzsaw arm from a mega knob. I shaved down the back, snipped off the saw blade, and glued it in place. I extended the orc tech layer by gluing on the panel from the mega knob kit to give the impression that the chainsword had been totally assimilated. Into the pommel I drilled a pair of holes and fitting cabling so that it would look like the chainsword was being powered by the reactor. For the cabling, I used one of the ones that come with the original kit and a section of guitar wire. Guitar wire is a pain to bend and never looks natural, and here loops out a little too much, but doesn't look too bad. The last step was to add barrels to Gaz's original gun arm. Basically every conversion of Gaz I've seen does this because it looks significantly better. The added length makes him feel more imposing, both because it expands his silhouette and because it adds some angularity which makes him feel less rounded and thus cartoonish. For those wondering, here's what the converted Gaz looks like compared to the original. He's a fair bit bigger and I think has a really different and unique look to him. I also think he's successful at representing the clans in his weapon and armor. Death Skull Chain Sword, Snakebite Drake Skull, Evil Sun Cyborg Head, Goff Joff Plate, and Bad Moon Daka Dispenser. The only clan that didn't make it in was the Blood Axes, because there just wasn't enough space for them. I played around a bit with adding a trench knife strapped to his lower leg, but the commissioner didn't really like it, so it got ditched. If you liked this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more huge orc warboss conversions, because trust me, there are definitely a few on the horizon that dwarf gas. If you're interested in commissioning me yourself, there's a link to join my email list in the description box where I'll announce when I'm accepting new ones. Thanks for watching.